after China's misadventures and savagery at the border, is a free Tibet on India's mind? This move of the Indian government says so. In what points are China losing all favour with India? Prasar Bharti, the state-run public broadcaster on Wednesday, posted a tweet urging people to listen to the Tibetan World Service offered by the All India Radio. This programme by AIR offers authentic news and programmes from Tibet. The service can also be accessed on YouTube in a text format. The news might seem insipid to few, but its repercussions are far-reaching. India is starting to turn some serious heat against China in the backdrop of the military tensions between the armies of the two nations in the Galwan Valley of eastern Ladakh. Tibet has been China's Achilles heel and Beijing tries to posture the landlocked country as part of its own territory, but the majority of Tibetans do not accept the Chinese rule and have been protesting against it for decades now. China had annexed Tibet in 1950-51 and over the years has been involved in numerous human rights violations in the region. Tibet has suffered unspeakable atrocities as, from 1958 to 1962, Mao and his government in their quest for cultural revolution killed more than 10 lakh Tibetans and destroyed 6,000 Buddhist monasteries. One of the thousands of Tibetan refugees who came to India was the Dalai Lama himself, Tibet's spiritual and political leader. He set up a Tibetan government in exile in India. Today, Tibetans live in the dark as no news and information flows in and out of Tibet on a large scale. Exiled Tibetans seek concrete inputs on their land. And this is where India has come up with a plan. This new measure to poke the dragon in the eyes is being seen as a precursor to India's changing foreign policy, which has been expedited by the loss of 20 brave hearts of the Indian soil. According to US intelligence, 35 Chinese soldiers have died and the number is expected to have grown even as China conceals the truth. China has made a serious mistake by initiating violence at the border, expecting that India would back off and give up its own territory in fear. Recognizing Tibet as an independent territory would give a severe jolt to Beijing's One China policy and most likely spur other countries to join the bandwagon. The results could be wide-ranging as it can very well spell the beginning of the end for China. The Galwan Valley standoff has cemented the fact that the Chinese side is vicious and untrustworthy and although a conventional war might not be the answer, accepting Tibet and bringing other countries into the fold is a sure shot to rile the Chinese and keeping them in check. China will certainly threaten with its empty posturing tactics, but as is the age-old adage, barking dogs seldom bite. Aggressive foreign policy against China is the need of the hour. India needs to shed the garb of neutrality and be bolder in its approach to China. Only accepting the Dalai Lama and giving him asylum will not give justice to the Tibetans. There is enough historical evidence to prove that Tibet has always been an independent country. The decision to air Tibetan news on the AIR platforms comes at the heels of another important decision the government had undertaken last month. In May, the Indian Metrological Department IMD, had made a significant move by adding Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan in its weather forecast. IMD had started referring to its meteorological subdivision of Jammu and Kashmir as Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Gilgit-Baltistan and Muzaffarabad. Muzaffarabad is part of illegal POK, while Gilgit-Baltistan is also under illegal Pakistani occupation. Taking a cue from the IMD, the state-run broadcaster Doordarshan National, DD News, All India Radio and Kashmir channels had also started including weather forecasts for POK and Gilgit-Baltistan. Last year, Union Home Minister Amit Shah had asserted in the lower house of parliament after the abrogation of Article 370 that POK and Aksai Chin are part of India as per India's consistent claim and thumpingly said, we are ready to give our lives for it. The whole world is looking towards helping Tibet. The coronavirus pandemic has opened the floodgates for countries to stand up to China and openly diss its policies, especially the One China policy. US Congressman Scott Perry late last month introduced a bill in the US Congress which directly challenges Chinese claims over Tibet. 
It seems like the US is planning to recognize Tibet as an independent country in a bid to increase pressure on China. With the US from one side and India from another, if these developments bear any fruit, the geopolitics of Asia and especially the Indo-China region will be completely metamorphosed.